Actually, both winning weight and winning age are important. So uh, usually if we increase winning age, then we can have heavier winning weight picks. But uh, what the, and then when we have uh, now, right now we have increased leader size, which means we usually have reduced birth weight. So then with typical winning age, like 21 to 22 to three days, we may have lower winning weight than previous years. And then even though we try to increase birth weight if, uh, while maintaining uh, leader size, there is still possibility with high leader variation, uh, within leader uh, weight variation, uh, so that we may have fall behind the peaks of winning a lot more than the yeah, last two or three decades. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast, we have Dr. John Dal Young, who is currently an assistant professor at the University of Georgia. Today, we'll be discussing how to feed low winning weight pigs for optimal growth and, and health. Dr. Young, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me for this podcast. Appreciate that, Dr. Yang. So, I mean, we know that we, you, ha you have joined a couple of our podcasts before, but would you mind opening with a brief introduction about your background? Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, my name is Dr. Yang Dal Jang, and I'm from uh, originally from South Korea, and I got my PhD, bachelor PhD. Uh, in Seoul National University at, in South Korea. And I did my postdoc at University of Kentucky under Dr. Lindemann's supervision. And then I was an assistant professor at University of Wisconsin River Falls for six years. And uh, I uh, moved down to Georgia and I'm an assistant professor of swine nutrition uh, here. And my major uh, research interest is in vitamins and minerals and feed additives and amino acid to help uh, nursery pigs and sow nutrition. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. So, lot of weight pigs are winning. That's a challenge that, you know, even with larger uh, leaders that we have today, um, it's, it's, it's a very relevant topic in our industry. So, let's start kind of with, with the basics, right? So, why is uh, winning weight important in contrast with the winning age? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So actually both winning weight and winning age are important. So uh, usually if we increase winning age, then we can have heavier winning weight picks. But, uh, what the, and then when we have, uh, now, right now we have increased leader size, which means we usually have reduced birth weight. So then with typical winning age, like 21 to 22 to three days, we may have lower winning weight than previous years. And then even though we try to increase birth weight if, uh, while maintaining uh, leader size, there is still possibility with high leader variation, uh, within leader uh, weight variation, uh, so that we may have fall behind the peaks of winning a lot more than the yeah, last two or three decades. Uh, so it is simple to increase winning weight by increasing winning age. But there is some constraints because if you increase winning age, then you need to have, uh, your sows will occupy your farrowing crates more. Then pig flow will change uh, based on that winning age change. You may need to have more farrowing crates, may need to have more nursery pens and followed by growing and finishing pens. So then if we can increase winning weight and then uh, the make them survive more after winning, uh, then yeah, we can easily increase swine productivity. So without that, that kind of restriction for increasing winning age, we can focus on increasing winning weight and then we can uh, uh, do, we can provide some uh, great nutritional strategies for these low winning weight pigs so that we can improve their survival ability, and then their performance after winning. Kemen calls all swine experts. 
You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Getting a little bit ahead and, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, of course, there is variation and there are low and high weight peaks. How do they differ in terms of uh, performance after winning? Uh, yes. So uh, we all know there is winning stress. So there is environmental stress and social stress and feed stress. And major stress will be from this dietary change. So we did uh, the, the small study with different winning weight. And we had uh, win, uh, heavy winning pigs over 5.5 kilogram. Uh, winning weight and then less than 5.5 kilogram as a, a low winning weight pigs. And then interestingly, every single pigs had low feed intake and their low gross rate, regardless of their winning weight in the first week post winning. And then their gross performance difference in daily gain and feed intake uh, was uh, were observed after first week. So what it means in the first week, every single pigs will have kind of similar winning stress, which should be very high, but heavy winning pigs can overcome this win, uh, winning stress a lot sooner than uh, these low winning weight pigs. So uh, the, as we all know, there is a, a higher risk of uh, uh, death and the more high mortality with low winning p- weight pigs. So we need, may need more tailored nutritional strategies for these uh, low winning weight pigs. Nowadays, you know, there is a lot of options out there to understand biomarkers and, and things that could help us to predict some of these uh, effects on, on pigs, right? So are there any useful of these biomarkers that, you know, could be used to predict the performance of pigs? at different, you know, weight ranges? Uh, yes. So we are using a lot of different blood and tissue biomarkers. And then uh, in my, uh, this winning weight study, I used uh, uh, primarily blood biomarkers because we can easily take blood samples. And if we can find some kind of relationship between winning weight and these biomarkers, then we can find what's the problem of these low winning weight pigs. And then we can uh, find what's the best method to overcome this problem for these low winning weight pigs. So firstly, we analyzed immunoglobulin G and A levels because uh, the, the piglets have passive immunity from sows. So then that immunoglobul- passive uh, immunity immunoglobulin uh, level still, uh, still maintained a little bit high, relatively high at winning. So if they have uh, more immunoglobulin G there, then we can say they may have uh, better uh, disease resistance after winning. And also uh, p- after winning, pig club may have oxidative stress and also the uh, the defense system for this oxidative stress, which is antioxidant system, is also important. So we can measure uh, blood antioxidant levels, and then we can also measure blood oxidative stress marker. So superoxide dismutase, catalase, and total antioxidant capacity are very common uh, antioxidant uh, markers. And then malondialdehyde and protein carbonyl, which is for lipid and protein uh, oxidative stress markers, respectively, are very uh, also common biomarkers. And then uh, because of dietary change, they may have gut health issue. So uh, I measured blood gut permeability marker, which is uh, which are uh, diamine oxidase and the lactate. So diamine oxidase are enzyme produced in uh, intestinal cells that degrade histamine. Uh, but if there is leaky gut, this can cross that epithelial cell line. And also the lactate is produced the bacterial fermentation. And then if there is gut barrier function damage, then it can also cross that epithelial cell line. Uh, 
So if you measure uh, serum or plasma diamine oxidase and the lactate levels, then you can, if it's, uh, you find, find elevated level, that means that piglets may have some kind of uh, gut permeability issues or gut barrier, barrier function damage. So these are common markers we can use to measure issues associated with winning and then low winning pig, weight, low winning weight pigs. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments. Join us in our next episode.